Kim here with Little Biz Resources, and today I want to talk a little bit about SEMrush or SEMrush. Um, I believe they call it SEMrush. And this is a tool that is a paid tool, though you can get a free trial. And the the tool helps you with a bunch of different ways. And and SEMrush specifically is for search engine marketing or search engine optimization. And it makes it a very good tool to identify ways to get organic or free traffic. You can use it for a bunch of different ways. But I, what I want to do today in this specific video is just cover how to use it for a local business. So using Google Business Profile, or GPB, or it was formerly known as Google My Business or GMB. So when you have a profile, you, there's a lot of different competition going on in your Google Business Profile, but there are a couple key things that you need to do to be able to rank better in the Google Business Profile. Now, this is tested over many, many years. And while Google consistently changes things, there are some things they do want, right? So we can come in here. This is, I'm, I'm in the trial right now. So you'll see that there are some things you cannot do in the trial or you have to upgrade to a higher level. So I just wanted to come in at the trial level and show you exactly what you can and can't do. So here I am in the SEMrush side. This is the projects. We're not gonna worry about projects right now. I'm going to scroll down and look at, sorry, I'm doing this with my camera in the way, um, local right here. So local, and then that opened up, you can see that there's SEO here and this one's local. So we're under the local tab and we're going to go to the GBP optimization. All right. So now here is where we're going to put in the business name. It should find it based on Google business profiles. I have a couple of them. I don't know if it's going to show up here because I get like zero traffic because I mostly just made it to show people how to make it. But we're going to try it and see if anything comes up. No. So we can do an advanced search and try to find it by other things. Um, let's actually try that. So we have business name and you can put your address in here. It should match the address on your profile. If you haven't built a Google business profile, you just need to go to business.google.com. If you spell it right. But the only time I can't type is when I do things, when I'm recording. I say that I probably don't. And then you sign in and you or manage it and then follow the steps to sign up. It's really easy now. It used to be super hard. It is so easy now. It's ridiculous. And I actually have another video that shows you how to do that. And I'll link to that in the description. All right. So. We are going to hide the advanced search and we're going to try to find something that's local here. Um, I'm going to go to maps.google.com. And since a friend of mine asked me about this and he's in real estate, not locally, somewhere else, we're going to do Realtor Sparks. Okay, Realtor near Sparks, Nevada. And the first one that comes up that's sponsored, we're going to look at this one right here. Nevada Real Estate Group LPT Realty, right? So I'm going to look that one up. So I'm going to come back into here. No, I'm going to copy this because. All right, so I'm going to put that, copy that. I'm going to come back into here. And I'm going to type it in and it's right here, which is hilarious since it's in Reno. Let's say, yeah, it's in Reno, not even in Sparks. So you can tell that when you are looking at the results, that the first one that came up, do do where was it? Right here. Look, they're way down here. And I am located, and I said near Sparks. Sparks is over here. Plum Lane's not even, like that's not even like a, oh, it might be Sparks. It's not, it's solidly Reno. So there's a bunch of these that should have come up first by location. Now, one thing that to understand about searches, and so when you're doing the search yourself, this will vary, right? I'm on desktop. For whatever reason, well, I say for whatever reason, for laws that have changed over the years, the IP address does not specify a specific location. So Google can only get specific, like they, it knows I'm generally in this area. It doesn't know where, I, where my address is versus on your mobile device, you have an actual, you usually let it says, okay, yeah, know my, my location and it'll go by um, Wi-Fi, cell towers, et cetera. And so it knows where you're at rather than on desktop, it doesn't. It just knows you're generally in this area. And if you're behind a VPN, 
a virtual private network, then it doesn't know where you are. And it's just going to guess based on generally where the IPs or IP numbers are grouped. So when you search on desktop, you can search the exact same thing on your on your mobile device at the same address and get completely different results. And then on top of that, if you do different searches on your mobile device versus your desktop or you have different accounts, you can have different algorithm results as well. So there's very little we can do to manipulate these results beyond the core elements, right? So, you know, reviews are important and you can see this one has 788 reviews. Is that why they're showing up first? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, why this term specifically Realtors near Sparks, Nevada is something that they're clearly showing up for and why it, who knows, right? I've probably searched this one before in the past, maybe from this IP address. Or it could just be that this one is the one that the algorithm chose to show me. So there's really no rhyme or reason necessarily. I would be a little concerned if it was showing me something from another state, right? Then I'd say, okay, something else is going on. They're definitely manipulating it. But for the most part, that wasn't a whole lot of manipulation going on. Um, Now, look, this was what's interesting. So I went in here, I, I told it, I selected this one, and it says online presence is bad. It's bad, and they're still ranking in one of the first results for that search term. So that is bad isn't necessarily, oh my gosh, end of the world, right? But bad means that there's opportunity to improve. So if you put your listing in here and you see bad, don't freak out. This one says 33 out of 43 listings to fix, which we'll look at in just a second. They have five out of five average star rating and 788 reviews. The number of reviews seem to be less important than the average star rating and then the um, fact that you have reviews. Right. Reviews are good. I've seen some with like two stars that rank above others. So even that is not as critical. And they will have like three reviews. I've seen a one. I've seen, you know, one five star review rank above other ones that are have multiple reviews. The reviews just seem to need to exist. That's it. So this one, they want you to, you know, get more details and get your free trial of additional stuff. Um, so they have, so you can do location information and get the details. So here, get listed in all top directories. This is what they want you to do. They want you to fix your listings. So right here, they're saying Facebook, there's no phone number. Now, this is all part of what they call your NAP, your N-A-P, your name, address, phone number. Those should be consistent across all of your citations. That's what they call a lot of these, so something in um, almost all these with the, are what they call citations instead of, or directory listings. They're the same type of thing, but we call them citations. And you can say show all directories, all these, and you can see wrong business name, wrong phone number, which may not be. So for whatever reason, it's linked to this one, but this it may be pulling the wrong information. So you might find out that oh, I'm not really on Yelp. I need to be on Yelp. So Facebook, no phone number. Bing, not present. So they're saying missed opportunity. And then they're telling you 650.8 million potential visitors. Now, that's just how many people are on Bing, not for that specific. There's not 650 million people looking for realtors near Sparks, Nevada, right? So um, this one, Google business profile issue not found because that's the one they've obviously optimized that. That's the best one to optimize. But if you're not on all of these other ones, and this is what a lot of people don't understand. Google searches all of these other citations to verify your information, right? So if you think about this, that um, Google's looking at Bing and saying, oh, well, we're not on Bing. So what does that mean, right? And, and within the algorithm, it prioritizes certain information over other information, and it changes all the time. So there's no way to say, well, I'm not on Bing. So if I change that, I'm going to be higher up. I don't know. Nobody knows. You can do it and see if it happens. And even then you might be higher up temporarily or never. You just never know. But having these on there and a consistent name, address, and phone number are the benefits to, that benefits you even on Google business, right? So on your Google business profile, they're pulling all this information to verify that, yes, this information is valid. Oh, look, they're listed here and here and here and here and here and here all listed the same way, then this is makes it a stronger information, which could potentially give you a better chance if everything else was equal and your citations are right and their and your competitor citations are wrong, 
it could give you a chance to go up. I understand not everything's equal, so that's just a say, hey, yes, it does count somewhere. But the other benefit to this is there are people who are searching on Bing, right? And you're not showing up on Bing. And granted, Bing Bing has its own internal ranking systems and everything else, which, by the way, a lot of them are using the Google formulas. So you might as well, you know, be listed on these places in a similar fashion. But if you're like, hey, I'm not listed there, then they can't find you, right? And there are plenty of people who use default browsers and information or their friend has a preference. Now, some of these I wouldn't worry about too much. Like there's one on here that is Foursquare. If you can get on it, great. If not, it's not the end of the world. So these other ones, like 600,000 for eLocal. I've never heard of eLocal. I only know about it because it's on the citation list. So if you can get on some of these, you can. But And the more you're on, the better. But if you're like, oh, hey, I can't get on some of these, I wouldn't worry too much. Um, Yahoo's a good one. It's been around forever. Even though it's only 653,000, it's still something that's that's relevant. TripAdvisor, again, if you can, it's great. Some of these are going to be paid. Some of these are going to be free. So I would go through all of these and say, hey, which ones are free? And I would I would get on those. So that would mostly benefit your NAP, your name, address, phone number, right? You want to make sure those are consistent across the board. And you see how they have, um, if you have like a license number that needs to be in there, make sure those are listed maybe in the name because some of them might have a different spot for it. But if it's not consistent across the board, it's not going to work. All right. So that is going to be the citations. Sorry, scrolling fast. And you can, they say, so look, automatic NAP management. See, I'm not the only one that makes this stuff up. So update business name, address, and phone number across all listings from one place. That is a a paid service, right? So it's not, it's not free. You have to upgrade to it. So that's one thing you, if you want to do it, it's probably worth getting for a month and enhancing it and doing it. All right. And then you can duplicate, delete duplicate listings. And then of course you can integrate what you can for here, but then if you decide to cancel later, but this is something worth keeping and maintaining in and of itself. And there was another company that used to do this and they cost about the same and they're really good at it. But if you can do it all through SEMrush, why not? And then they have, of course, additional ways that you can power up. These are all things that are, that are additional. And so we're not going to talk about those. But let me scroll up. And we're going to look at this one here in just a second. So I'm going to scroll up really fast. And we're going to look at, so this is listing management. That's the one we talked about. You have to upgrade. And we're going to do map rank tracker. Now, I could have just clicked on that one, but I want to show you how to do it from here too. So we're going to do the exact same one. We're going to find the same company. Give it a second. That's it right here. And what it's going to do is it has real estate agency as the keyword. Now you can add additional keywords. These are, there's, you can see there's credits here, available credits. The more keywords you have and the more points that you have on here, the more credits you use. So you'd have to play with this. This one has property investment company, real estate agent. I might want that. Real, real estate consultant, property investment firm. In a different video, I'm going to talk about how to identify keywords that are more beneficial for you versus less beneficial, right? So some of these are not going to be, if they don't apply to you, definitely don't. These are AI recommended ones. So they are going to be generally better than randomly picking something. But you can see like real estate consultant services is not one that I would necessarily search. And I'm going to tell you now everything real estate related is competitive. So it's it, with the exception of like commercial, right? There's such a such a smaller fraction of people who do commercial that and granted there's a lot less looking for it but if you are like hey I'll work with somebody who's looking for commercial property like I have uh, my best friends were looking for they own a business you know and they have a physical property there but they're looking for another physical location for a different business that they were going to start and when they reached out to these companies they're like look if you're not a chain we're not going to deal with you right almost all of the commercial real estate property people here in our area said that to them. And so if you were somebody that says, hey, I will work with anybody with that's looking for commercial property and help them find what they need, 
then you should definitely focus on that because you're going to get a lot more calls simply because all these other places are not, they're not handling it unless you're a chain. That's ridiculous, right? I mean, I don't know how, that's why we have so many properties sitting around the area that are vacant. Nobody will return calls. Nobody will return emails. Nobody will return any type of contact with them because you're in the chain. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and do real estate agency. No, we're not going to do both. We're going to say real estate agent because if I'm looking for a real estate agent, I'm going to put that in or I'm going to put in realtor, right? So we're going to do those two and then I'm going to put these as a radius within, it should be a radius within their location. So I'm going to do, let's just, I'm going to do more pins so you can see it. So I'm going to do more pins so it shows it like more focused in there. And then instead of kilometers, because I'm American, I'm going to say miles. And I'm going to say within a five mile radius. Now you might be tempted to go, well, I'm going to be, I'm going to do a 40 mile radius. The problem is, is that one of the factors for Google business, which is interesting that it gave me again, plum lane for Sparks. But what they usually do is, especially if like you're a dentist office or something that's a physical location that people have to drive to, Google knows, okay, we know that people aren't going to drive more than 15, 20 miles to go. If I'm going to go to a dentist, I'm not going to drive 25 miles to go to a dentist. Most people are not. And so distance for some specific industries is a factor. Clearly, real estate is one where it's a little bit of fudge factor. But for dentists, grocery stores, things like that, it's going to be where it's a physical location and people are driving to you, you're going to not, your radius is going to be very small, right? And it just depends on the industry. I think five miles is probably pretty realistic if you're within that five mile radius. So in fact, this one says within five miles of it, it's going all the way into Sparks, which is not accurate because five miles is probably like here. Hmm. Well, anyway, so it'll show you something on that. And then they say that this is a schedule so you can get your rankings and where you're at. But again, you're creating this campaign and it's going to cost you credits. So I'm just going to say create campaign so you can see what it looks like. And I'm only doing two keywords. And again, if you don't know what keywords you should be using, or if you're like, hey, you know what? I don't know. You want to optimize for the best keywords, right? You want to focus on the keywords that are going to convert people. So I wouldn't want to be like real estate training if I don't sell real estate training. Now, look, they do rank. This is pretty good, actually. They do really good. Considering the fact that they have a poor online presence, according to the, they rank pretty well. And this is average rank is 9.8, whereas this one's 15.4. Look, these are much lower. So 9.8 is, is very high. And, but see, the further out they're going, like this is out, I'm trying to see, this is the water park here. So this is where I live. It's funny. It's, so it says three here, but it showed me as one when I searched. <clears throat> but I said near Spark. So that particular keyword, <clears throat> excuse me, that particular keyword was a one for whatever area here. And then it's 20 plus here. 20 plus goes from three to 20 plus. 14, 17, 20, and then 20 plus. So they're not focusing on these areas for whatever reason. Google business does pull from websites too for part of their data. So if we might want to actually, let's look at their website real quick, if I can find it. So they're using, no, they do have their own website. That was their, their booking. So this is their website, which they could get a lot of traffic. That'll be one thing is if you get a lot of traffic to your website, they have, it says 900 plus Google reviews, but did we say, didn't only have like 700 and something on there? Okay, so now they have new construction arena. So they have a lot of property. De so like they have this incline village listed. And as long as Google can see that, if their robots can see it, and I won't dive too much into that, but we'll assume that they can. They have financing, mortgage information listed. So they have a really nice website. They've got a YouTube video embedded in here, which is, you know, Google loves Google. So Google properties. They've got communities. The communities listed with different pages. See, that's what I always tell people to do is, especially in real estate. So whether it's real estate or you're doing some sort of service, you're in roofing, you're in plumbing, have a different page for each local community. Like this one's Reno. So it's a keyword they want to they search for. They have Sparks listed on here. A lot of people they have, especially in real estate, I've seen they have like one page of information. That's it. And they might have like 
some cities listed or they just have their most recent properties or something, that's not going to be a whole lot to let Google know that you serve that area. They probably also have, let's see here if they have it. So they have, besides the reviews, if you look in the about section, um, they have, they do not have a service area listed on here. So you can have, they, and this is something I would do to optimize this one more, would be to, they have photos and videos, which is good. Um, the more photos and videos and, and different things they have from, from the owner, which they don't even have an update section on here for whatever reason. But they should have a, an update listing, which is their, bit, their listings, their, um, like their posts on Google Business. But I don't see where they put service areas in here. And it, they might just not be showing it. Google will go through phases where they show stuff and they don't show things. So, and then they also have people also search for, which is some of them are related to, some of them are not. And then they have web results. They're pulling web results to show this to you as part of their, their holistic service, right? So you need to be everywhere, but you don't have to be everywhere either. I've seen ones that only have a Google business listing, no website. And they do everything on Google business listings and they, they do great, right? It just depends on the industry, depends on what they're doing. Um, they rely on a lot on reviews and this, so this could itself be more optimized from what I'm seeing here. And again, that could just be because Google Maps is not showing it to me, but it, you just never know. So those are some things that I would do to optimize that. But going back to SEMrush or SEMrush, that we see that, okay, these are the areas that they're not in. There's a lot of new construction out here, so that might be why. And of course, then geographically, they're located, where are they located on here? Um, Midtown, Pepper Mills right here, Plum Lane's over right here somewhere. So where they're ranking one is closest to them here. And then they, of course, rank all over the place here, which some of these areas are nice. Um, These areas, I'm surprised. The, again, all kind of newer construction areas. There's new construction out here though too. So I'm impressed with their ability to be one on this. And I don't think it's just because of their um, Google business listing. I think their website does help a lot on that. And then that's, you know, they have, if we say optimiz, let's just look on the optimization again. The, that's what they're talking about, the citations. So the citations are a big thing. Um, they're doing the reviews if they optimize their Google business listing a little bit better, which we're not going to be able to see that from here, but I would put in service areas and I would definitely have updates. I don't know why there's no updates showing up. So then the other thing they could do is they could look at a site audit, which this is SEO tools essentials. So this is still the SEO. It's the same type of thing. They could do a site audit. We're going to do that in a different video. So they could do a site audit and see if there's opportunity there. But for the most part, for Google business, they're doing really well. So whatever they're doing, they need to keep doing. It's entirely possible they have advertising running because they are a larger company. That also plays a role because that drives more traffic. So if you're doing, if you've identified, hey, these are keywords. And let's go back to that map for a second. Um, let's see if I can get to it. Yeah. So... The ones that are one and two is what we would call, um, they already have momentum on those, right? So we know that because they're coming up, these are the keywords. Uh, we have real estate agent for this one, and we'll go to realtor and see how that one comes up. So realtor, they're coming up is one and three and two. And so anything that you're coming up with in the top, like, I'd say maybe the top eight. So as long as you're coming up somewhere on here in the top eight, then you are you have momentum for that. Um, you are you you already have something optimized for that. And if that's the case, I'm going to include a link to another source that can help you potentially boost those listings if you're interested. Um, it's not a hundred percent. It's just a, a tool that you can use, if, especially if you're not running ads and you're looking for some sort of alternative to help drive traffic and refine the algorithm. It's a great resource. So I'll include a link for that in the description. And then I would also recommend exploring keywords more because like I plugged in common ones, realtor and real estate agent, but I've had discussions with people and they're like, well, 
I think, and I'll use this one because this one comes up, top real estate agent. I'm going to tell you, I do not know very many people who plug that in other than if they're trying to rank for something. So we're going to look at how to figure out, one, if it's easy to rank for, which there's nothing in real estate that is easy to rank for. But I'll show you how to do that with other keywords. And then we'll explore, you know, how to figure out which ones are our consumer, the consumer intent, whether it's informational, transactional, et cetera. Right. So we'll explore that in another video. And I'll, I'll link to that in the description as well. Or if it hasn't come out yet, just, you know, subscribe and you'll get notified when it comes out. So this will be a series. I'm going to do like three or four videos to, to kind of show this. So this one's for local. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of where to get started. Those big ones are the citations. Make sure that your NAP, your name, address, phone are all consistent across the board. They give you the top citation places in here. Then we've got, um, you know, identifying the keywords that you rank for. You can explore your competition. But again, for Google business, it's more just doing the things that are right for Google business, which is the NAP, the updates, refining your website if you need to. Um, that's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot more you can do, again, because of the algorithm. But, I, but honing in on those items is going to help a lot. All right. So hopefully this helps you identify some ways to improve. Check out the trial. I'll put a link down there, but you can go to, um, you know, semrush.com and they have a seven day trial. If you want a 14 day trial, you can sign up to my email list. And it's not my affiliate link. It's somebody else's affiliate link that they gave me access to. And I will share that with you if you sign up to my email list. I don't want to make it public because if it changes or goes away, I don't want to have to track it down and delete it. So, and also, I mean, I don't think they care, but I haven't got permission to share it either. So anyway, if you're interested, you can sign up to the email list if you want 14 days instead of seven. And then if you have questions, hop into the Facebook group and we can explore this more. Thanks.